that's uh, that's a very in a way it's quite a tough question because uh, there cannot be one answer to this. You know, um, it's often we learn these things through trial and error method, but nevertheless, uh, using our uh, own um, uh, logic, sometimes we can probably rationally say that if we do certain things, most probably will be increasing the chance of success. So, so it's basically from that angle, say applying this uh, simple logic, let us, uh, you know, um, figure out that what probably we may do in order to in, uh, increase our uh, probability of success or in other reduce the uh, risk of failure. Um, I think um, many of them, um, as many companies uh, and, uh, have been now trying to uh, to build kind of an you know, innovation hub uh, where actually you will see that a um, lot of exchange of ideas and you know, free uh, free thinking uh, and you know, things are happening and in a larger organization sometimes you know you can uh, create this kind of hub uh, uh, it's kind of an illustration place where mm, there are a lot of uh, you know uh, interaction taking place um, that's uh, um, I mean that can be also created different ways okay you sometimes um, you know you can also create uh, or provide some time to uh, employees so as uh, as it is known in some cases as uh, free time so about 15 to 20 percent of the time you uh, give free and when uh, and also if you can provide an opportunity where this free time sometimes people can uh, you know, really uh, interact with uh, uh, with different kind of people uh, to uh, bounce off their ideas and work on uh, uh, projects uh, which they themselves determine. And then uh, that also can uh, result in um, generating new kind of you know ideas. That uh, sometimes also you can deploy some people. Um, uh, very strategically, depending upon their uh, um, own capabilities, because every person has different uh, capability. Um, some people are, say, some people are good in in, uh, in procuring or um, or not procuring. I say hunting ideas. Hunting when they they specific. I mean they. Specifically, they all the time they keep looking uh, uh, or keep uh, you know, hearing from people uh, who say something interesting. So their mind is so trained that moment they hear something interesting from someone, they immediately pick that up. So they are basically innovation hunters because they are hunting for good ideas because in every organization you will find that many people are every day saying very many interesting things but people often tell it without their um, without not understanding without a very serious conscious uh, thinking that they really want to pursue that idea for the work, that idea for the but that idea by itself could be very interesting. So, um, and that kind of ideas probably in every organization, every day people are generating so much. People say so many things. Maybe, um, uh, or, uh, you know, in the cafeteria while eating, somebody says something interesting. You know, um, or while working on the soft floor, you know, uh, say something about the work process. You know. Uh, uh, but after saying they keep on doing same old thing so these people the hunters they notice they pick up those things and then 
sometimes they know that, okay, if somebody is saying an interesting idea that they know, I, I mean, they, they will pass it on to uh, maybe, you know, some, uh, some, another, some other people who are, uh, who are also very well connected with different, uh, with uh, uh, different other experts in the organization. So, uh, um, so you see, so uh, they get, uh, suppose they get one idea, interesting idea from one place, but then this idea then they pass it on to some maybe other people who are also very, who are very critically connected to some other people in the organization who can play a very important role to uh, implement this idea, take forward this idea further. So it's, it's basically they, they work, I mean, work as catalyst. Catalyst, so taking, gathering idea from one place and taking it to another place where some other people who really um, would pick this up idea and start working um, working on that. Then, uh, you know, monitor and redirect projects. Sometimes they see that, okay, some people are working on a project and then they suddenly see that this project probably, you know, that those, uh, the organization understand that, uh, that how to redirect the project uh, to suit it uh, the, uh, the requirements of the uh, of uh, of tomorrow. Uh, so uh, um, and and most importantly, the organization should understand that what kind of resources they should develop or acquire to meet the challenges of tomorrow. Suppose an organization is reading a weak signal. Weak signal say, uh, is saying that um, uh, tomorrow. Uh, maybe or maybe one year down the line, um, the our classes, uh, um, the edu in the education sector, the classes, uh, this kind of common classes, uh, won't be organized. Every in every class, every student would be learning according to their uh, to his or her learning style. So maybe every person is sitting in in a classroom, but every person is learning in a different way and every person uh, and the, um, the teacher or the facilitator is facilitating the process so uh, so the course um, course there uh, the students are pursuing in the institution are pursued differently by different persons in the do they are sitting in the same class you know so it's uh, um, it's same class but taught or learned very differently so that would require um, the organization to acquire different kind of resources who are capable of you know, doing that. Uh, then also, I think often uh, we, the, um, the most of the organizations, we are very, um, uh, we are very reluctant to change the pace of a project. Uh, say we, we have taken up a project and we uh, decide the timeline that okay the project has to be implemented in one year's time or two years time but now with this fast changing technology often we have to shift probably the the timeline you know and that itself is a capability and that um, I mean requires lots of uh, effort on many to really to be able to do that because uh, you know and most of the time, once we decide the schedule for a project, we don't like to move the schedule. I mean, there will be resistance to change that, you know, so advance it, you know. Uh, and sometimes you need to abandon the project before even you get concrete proof of uh, its, uh, um, uh, you know, its probable failure. Because sometimes probably using your intuition, gut feel and some weak signal, sometimes you have to decide, no, this project should be abandoned because tomorrow when actually it gets installed, it won't have much future. So develop that ability to even abandon a project midway. This is, these are also, you know, um, some very important, uh, I think, uh, um, 
uh, ability the uh, organization should uh, acquire, then, um, then I think uh, the, uh, the leader as well as uh, almost uh, you know, every employee uh, and, uh, uh, should um, learn to play multiple roles because and, um, we um, in the in the age of smart material uh, when a anything we are even procuring to do different things at one go say today I am buying a shirt that shirt to protect myself to cover myself to keep myself warm to make my uh, to read my blood pressure to convey message to my doctor all these things are done by a, a maybe a simple shirt you know so uh, same way I think people um, uh, everybody has to uh, uh, has to do uh, different uh, things play different roles and particularly the leaders you know have to learn to really uh, you know uh, to uh, learn how to play different roles and uh, most importantly that uh, that uh, we we got to uh, deal in a very systematic way the uncertainty you know it's it's no good uh, if we say that oh things are so uncertain things are changing so fast that tomorrow what's going to happen we don't know uh, I mean that that that's sometimes can lead to total inaction paralysis so that should not happen that we in a very structured way we must learn how to deal with uncertainties and all the time uh, uh, evaluate uh, uh, evaluate the results of the steps which we are taking and uh, and keep making corrections keep evaluating also the situation that how uh, bad or how good the situation has become because the situation is also changing very fast. So it's basically uh, looking at the situation and looking at, at our progress. We keep on uh, um, keep on uh, uh, you know uh, changing our um, course often to deal with that certainty. That's important. The last point about systematic approach to deal with uncertainties. This is risk management, yeah. would you say? Yeah, yeah, this is risk management. It's a high level.